Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. Well, today is the day. Today is episode 1000. I can't believe it that we have had 1,000 daily episodes of Day by Day without interruption. And uh, it began during the pandemic, began when I was uh, wanting to keep in contact not only with uh, my school, St. Michael the Archangel Catholic High School, where I was president, but also with my parish here at St. Therese. And it was an opportunity to uh, express uh, ministry virtually uh, during a time when we were separated uh, physically. And when the uh, pandemic was uh, lessened to the point where we were able to come back together, a number of people encouraged me to just keep on going. Well, I did. And I kept going and going and going. And here we are. We are now at episode 1000. So uh, it's been a joy and I don't plan on stopping, the Lord willing, for quite a while. Uh, I enjoy doing this and I hope that uh, those who uh, join me each day enjoyed wa enjoy watching it as well. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were coming down from the mountain, the disciples asked Jesus, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said in reply, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this passage is really uh, a time where the disciples are asking Jesus about a prophetic pronouncement that is found in the Old Covenant. In fact, in fact by Malachi, who was uh, the final Old Testament prophet uh, until the coming of Christ. And one of the things that is said at the very end of Malachi's prophecy is this. It says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, whom I have charged at Horeb, with statutes and ordinances for all Israel. So the final pronouncement of, of Malachi was that uh, for this particular time in history, not to forget the ordinances, the teachings, that uh, were revealed by God to Moses and have then been uh, written down, especially in the first five books of the Bible called the Torah, the law of God. And that are the five books that have governed the nation of Israel through uh, their whole existence and uh, the Jews still at the time of Jesus. And Malachi goes on to say this. He says, now I am sending to you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day. He will turn the heart of the fathers to their sons and the heart of sons to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with utter destruction. And so what we have here is the prophecy by Malachi that indicates that God is going to send Elijah the prophet. Now, Elijah in the Old Testament has already come and uh, was, as you remember, was taken up into heaven by a fiery chariot. And he was quite a spectacular prophet in, in how he looked and what he said. He is considered the prophet of the Old Testament. And you may remember that in the Transfiguration, uh, the law and the prophets were symbolized or represented, would be a better way to describe it, by two individuals that appeared with Jesus, Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. So Elijah has always been seen as such a, a major prophet of the Old Testament. And 
and it, basically the the word was that Elijah is going to come again and he is going to do a work of unification turning the heart of the fathers to their sons and the heart of the sons to their fathers and so one of the questions that the disciples were asking is validly how can we consider that you're the Messiah if Elijah hasn't come yet. The scribes indicate that Elijah was supposed to come. And it could be even in these days that when word went out that some were believing Jesus was the Messiah, that some of the scribes would have said, no, 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 he can't be because Elijah has to come first. So there may have even been a pushback by some of the scribes based on that prophecy from the Old Testament. And interestingly, uh, what Jesus said is, Elijah has already come. Now, it wasn't Elijah in uh, the person, but Elijah in spirit. Just as Elijah was there to stir up and to call up uh, people to follow the works of God and to be a part of the kingdom uh, and was a prophet at a time when uh, basically uh, the, the nation was under siege. And uh, this was a time when uh, they were under siege not so much by outside forces as much as by interior decay that uh, their their spirituality was basically uh, destroyed. And uh, so Elijah the prophet comes, and it's at that point that he defeats the, uh, the, priest, uh, the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and all of those things taking place. Well, just as this happened at that time in history, here in the time of Jesus, a new Elijah arose. And as they came to understand that was John the Baptist. He looked a lot like uh, Elijah. He, they were dressed very much the same way, and they had the same kind of ministry, calling a nation back to repentance that had strayed vitally from what uh, God really intended for his people, his covenant people. And so today, as uh, we think about uh, our own preparation during Advent, this question again, um, why do the pro uh, scribes say that Elijah must come first? In other words, can we really have confidence that Jesus is who he said he is? That when he came as a child in the manger, that at that moment a Messiah had come into the world. And that that same Christ who came into the world would come again. And if Elijah was supposed to come first, what do we believe? Well, Jesus confirmed it. John the Baptist was the same as Elijah. And he was going to come, as he did come, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to the fathers. And what this is really doing is the, the calling of the sons of Israel, the sons of the covenant, uh, to back to their roots. That's what this repentance call and baptism was all about. Um, at this point, of course, the entire nation of Israel was no longer unified, and we had uh, the uh, ten tribes had basically been distributed into the Gentiles, and we have now Judah and a small part of uh, Benjamin that were left. And so uh, at this time, it was John the Baptist as the forerunner calling people to repentance, to return to their roots, calling the fathers to the sons, calling the sons to the fathers, kind of a reunification of covenant before the coming of the Messiah. So uh, are we on the right track? Absolutely. Everything that was foretold has come to be, and we can have confidence that God truly has visited us in the person, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.
Well, I guess we're on to another milestone. Tomorrow will be episode 1001. So off we go. But uh, again, I have truly enjoyed being a part of uh, this daily podcast, and I hope that you also have really enjoyed it. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.